everyone. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church and to this service of worship today. We so appreciate your patience as we find the best way to connect with each other spiritually in this time of sheltering at home and, and being spiritually distance, distant. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your ongoing generosity. If this is your first experience of worship at Bethlehem, we really want to welcome you and we pray that you experience God's grace and presence as we worship together. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us a comment during the service. You can call us anytime during the week or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you and we will get back with you. I heard someone say just recently that as Christians... We proclaim a story with a happy ending. And what that means is, if the story you're hearing isn't happy, it's not the end. God is with us. God is here right now to bless us, and we're so glad that you're here too. Today is Palm Sunday. We celebrate Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem as king. So this week, of course, is Holy Week, and we want to invite you to join us each day for our passing of the peace time. On, on Thursday and Friday, we'll have our Monday Thursday and Good Friday services. You can join us beginning at 7 o'clock on those days. And then Easter Sunday, we are planning an Easter sunrise service. We're planning for a service back here, a Facebook Live service at 10 o'clock, and are so looking forward to celebrating the resurrection with you. I also want to encourage you to stay connected. And one of the ways you can do that, if you haven't already, is to sign up for our online directory. Neil Little has done a great job the past few years setting that up and, and maintaining it. And it really does help us to stay uh, connected and, and enables us to, to check in on you and, and, and with you. We are finishing up our food drive to benefit those who have been impacted by the tornadoes this the past few weeks. There are three containers uh, just outside the gym doors. Someone will be here till 12 o'clock uh, today. I saw that um, Tom Henry and, and our former pastor Ryan Bennett and some others were down at Wilson County Fairgrounds yesterday and people were lined up to bring donations. So thank you for your cooperation for for your donating to, uh, to those in need. We have other projects being planned, and if you have ideas of how we can reach out to those impacted uh, by uh, the, the tornadoes or the coronavirus, we would love to hear from you. We'll have a virtual communion service as, as part of our worship today. If you don't have uh, bread and juice ready now, you may want to, you may want to Look in your kitchen and find some. John Wesley, our, uh, our founder, the founder of Methodism, was a practical theologian and an innovator and was all about connecting people with God and God with people. And that's what this service this morning is about. We're so glad that you're here. Let us worship to God. Yeah. 
return to you Bethlehem. Hope you're doing well out there. It's Palm Sunday. Yay. It's, uh, gosh, it's a day to celebrate, right, in our faith. Triumphal entry, right? Remember the story? Uh, normally we would have palms processing down the aisle here, but uh, we have some palms here. Sarah has a palm on her music stand. And uh, yesterday my family, we went out and just cut off some branches in a tree. Uh, don't tell the state park, but we did, and because uh, we needed, we didn't have any palms, so we needed something uh, to celebrate. So we hung those on the door as a reminder that Jesus came for us. He came to save us, just like the song says. So this is an old hymn that talks about that.
Good morning again, you all. So glad that you're worshiping with us today. Um, it's Palm Sunday, and we just want to um, let everyone know that, you know, the first Palm Sunday didn't happen in a church, you know. The first Palm Sunday happened on a, uh, on a road in Israel. And if you're mourning today, the fact that um, we aren't able to come together, join together on this, this special Sunday, um, just remember that, you know. We can hearken back to that first century, that very first Palm Sunday. Um, so, yeah, we be on the lookout. We will have palms for you to pick up. Uh, if you want to drive by the church, we'll have a bucket of them for you if you'd like to pick them up um, sometime this week. And we'll also be sharing some videos of cool things that you can do with your palm. So at this time, we want to move into our joys and concerns. Uh, I'm going to pull up our, our feed here, and you guys can share... Um, your joys and concerns that you might have. So uh, first, I just want to share that um, Rosalie Wolf is in the hospital currently. And so if we could just uh, pray for her and her family during this time. We also want to pray for uh, Davis Johnson and uh, his family as they work through surgery. Lisa has a praise where we are celebrating Olivia's birthday. So happy birthday to you, Olivia. What other joys and concerns might you all have today? Just type them in the comments and we can share um, with them together. A joy for me is I just, I got to, um, I got, I just had a great weekend because I got to have like this paint party with one of my friends from high school. We just got on, on chat and we like painted our faces together and it was fun for sure. Mega joy from Sharon uh, is that Ian is back in the States from Scotland, so good there. A joy and a concern from Sweet Celia, her first graders are at, for her first graders at home that they might not be frightened but find peace and joy uh, with their families. Uh, Amy is praying for the family of, the high of her high school friend Dave who passed away this week. So Sissy is sending a praise for Brian and Joe, sounding great up here. Um, Caitlin Louder turns 11 this Friday, so happy birthday to her. We have lots of birthday, and Abby Porter turns 16 tomorrow, her sweet 16. And, and Ella, Ella Honeycutt also has a birthday tomorrow. Lots of birthdays in the house. Woo -woo. All right. Let's see. We will pray. Yes. So Kathy Kunkel um, asked for prayers for the survival of all the small businesses, particularly in the Grassland Franklin area, but of course, all over um, the country at this time. Do we have any more? Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, go, Brian. So I just think we should pray for uh, really kids of any age. Um, looking at my family, we have five. Two of them are introverts, and they're kind of loving life because this is the w they think this is the way the world should be <laughs> by yourself. But then we have three that are so extroverted, and they're missing their friends. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, we don't really, we don't really see a lot of depression in younger children, but when they can't s be with their friends, when that gives them life, yeah. you know, um, 
it's just hard. It's hard as a parent to see that with your kids and that, I mean, Zoom is great and technology is awesome, but there's just something about that, sure. you know, human experience of seeing somebody. Yeah. And, uh, and we're just praying really hard for our kids that yeah. are missing their families. Yeah. Pray for, pray for our young, our young people in yeah. our community. Um, I know I, I had a parent tell me, you know, like my kids just think they're invincible. Um, you know, so this is a hard, a hard time. So we have a few more that we'll share. Um, let's see. Pray for Jody Devada's son uh, and future daughter-in-law as they have to replan their wedding. Yeah, that's that's hard. A praise from from Aaron about Malcolm. Malcolm had a good week and was even seen cutting the grass, so that's great. And uh, prayers for Craig's mom, who will undergo surgery on the 14th. So, yeah, surgery during this time, I can't imagine that being, I'm sure it's really stressful and, and uh, has a lot of anxiety around that. Uh, Neil and Rebecca's granddaughter, they also have a birthday tomorrow. Her name is Elise. That's three birthdays for tomorrow. That's awesome. Um, Kristen has several friends and fam family recovering and coping with the virus. Yeah, so prayers for their healing and prayers for um, Susan Richards' Uh, friend Mary Catherine Connolly, who uh, pray for healing for that friend in Colorado. Thank you for sharing your prayer requests with us and your joys. It's a way that we can still hopefully feel like a community and connect with you guys when you are willing to share in this format. So thank you. Um, at this time, let's uh, enter into a time of prayer. Caught now between joy and despair as we move towards Easter, as we face the challenges that are before us, we yearn for the fulfillment of God's desire to bring wholeness into our lives. Let us go to God in prayer for the transformation of the church and world. The Lord be with you. And now, gracious God, author of salvation, we praise you and give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came in your name and turned the lonely way of rejection and death into triumph. Grant us the steadfast faith to enter into the gates of righteousness that we might receive grace to become citizens of your heavenly kingdom. Awaken in us the humility to serve wherever creation is broken and in need. Give us courage to face our current trials according to your strength. We so thank you for those who don't have the luxury of staying at home or working at home. As we do what we can to slow the spread of this virus, we so thank you for doctors, for nurses, for medical and housekeeping staff in hospitals, for firefighters, for police officers who put themselves at risk for us. Guide our leaders, guide our researchers, and may this challenge we face make us more appreciative of what we have and more willing to help all others who suffer and are in need. We do enter this time caught between joy and despair. We praise you for those celebrations on our hearts, even as we lift up the concerns that have been named as we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This song is so pertinent to where we are today. So um, as we sing it, just listen to the words and let them speak to you. You tell mountains they must fall and they fall. Tell oceans to be still and their call. You tell sickness it must leave and it's gone. In my weakness, God, I know you are strong. No higher name, no greater throne. 
my God is over all. I believe it and I have seen it. My God is over all. I believe it and I have seen it. My God is over all. Morning, Bethlehem. Our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Debbie. Will you pray with me? And now, O oh Lord, speak to us as your word is proclaimed, that we might see you as you are, that we might see you as you truly are, as our King, as our Lord, as the one who brings us peace, both now and forever. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. J.K. Levine, who teaches New Testament and Jewish studies at Vanderbilt Divinity School, has written a book called Entering the Passion of Jesus, which includes a chapter on the scripture that, Je that Debbie just heard, that we just he heard Debbie Robinson read for us. It's a great book. Many of us have read it. The youth group studied it during Lent last year. Some Sunday school classes have studied it. We were in the process of beginning a study of the book when we had to hit pause and, and begin our practice of, 
of uh, social distancing. But in the book, she explores the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry, which given our current experience, I think we might be able to understand at a level we otherwise would not have been able to understand it. And I hope those connections uh, unfold through this, through this message. One of the things she does at the end of each of her chapters in the book is to include questions for discussion. And I'd like for us to discuss one of those questions now. We'd love to hear your responses. Um, the background of the question is, as you think about Jesus' entering the city of Jerusalem, think back of all the parades that you've ever seen. Could be a small town parade, could be a, a Macy's Day, New York, Thanksgiving Day parade, one you've participated in or one you've just seen, and then fill in this statement, complete this statement. It's not a parade without blank. So we'll give you a minute to, to send in some thoughts. I did bring one or two from home, and we have a very small studio audience who may want to share some ideas. One I brought from home is that for many people, it's not a parade without music. These days, when I think about a parade, my first thought is Franklin High School coming down Main Street for their annual parade with Liam on that snare drum and big bass drums and crashing brass cymbals and trombones, maybe 76, leading the big parade. It's hard to imagine a parade without music. Do we have any responses? A lot, of, a lot of you mentioned the Franklin High School band. It's a, it's a great parade memory. Any other ideas? Horses. It's not a parade without horses. You know, it, it, even the smallest parade, there's usually someone on a horse. And if it's a very elaborate parade, you might even see Joe Exotic. Well, you probably wouldn't see Joe Exotic right now, but someone like Joe Exotic up on a trailer with lions and tigers. Hard to imagine a parade without animals. Bright colored clothes, floats, and, and a crowd, a crowd. It's hard to imagine a parade without a crowd, which sort of makes our Palm Sunday worship a little bit of a challenge because we usually have a nice procession of the children waving the palm branches. So children, if you're at home watching, wave those palm branches. In our text today from Matthew, as in the gospel account of this, of this story in the gospel of Mark and the gospel of Luke and in the gospel of John, Jesus' entry is often compared to a parade. They're singing all the way from Bethpage to Jerusalem. The crowd lined up along the road are singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And there's a theme to the parade, to the procession. Because the one who comes in the name of the Lord is the son of David. And Matthew wants us to know that this son of David who enters the city is a king unlike any king who has ever reigned. So I'd like to share from the book of Zechariah the prophecy the, that is being fulfilled in Matthew chapter 21, 
This is Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 10. And Matthew also draws a little bit from Isaiah. But here's the text from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You know, in the text from Zechariah, the author uses a form of poetry which is called Hebrew parallelism. As he describes the donkey, he says the same thing in a slightly different way. On a donkey, the foal or the colt of a donkey. In Matthew's gospel, in Luke's gospel, in John's gospel, that's, that's interpreted as one animal. Matthew wants to make sure that we know Scripture is really being fulfilled, and so he has a donkey and a colt. He does that on purpose because he wants us to know Jesus represents peace and humility. Lo, he comes riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is a king unlike any other. This is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is greater than the temple. He's greater than any general. He's greater than any king who's ever ridden a war horse or in a chariot behind a war horse. And yet... The way he comes absolutely astounds us. He comes in a way that we would never expect. G.K. Chesterton once wrote a poem about the donkey Jesus rode into Jerusalem that really helps us understand the nature of Jesus' ushering in the kingdom that day. It's simply called the donkey, and we're going to hear it now. This is the voice of Harry Robinson, The Donkey, by G.K. Chesterton. When fishes flew and forests walked, and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starved, scourged, deride me, I am dumb, I keep my secret still. Fools. For I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears and palms before my feet. The donkey described in Chesterton's poem is not as sleek and powerful as a Siberian tiger not as impressive and majestic as an Arabian charger. This is not the most sophisticated animal on earth being described. With a monstrous head, with ears like errant wings, with a voice like a shrieking cry. An outlaw wandering through the desert to keep from being domesticated. 
this is not a sophisticated, graceful animal. And yet, there's the last stanza of that poem. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. For there was a shout about my ears and palms before my feet. God can use any object. God can use any person to usher in the kingdom. A donkey with a monstrous head, a preacher with big ears, or some other imperfection, God can use even a horrible cross. Let's think back. Let's think back to the way this parade ends. Those who are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, were calling for him to be killed before the week was over. Crucify him. One of his own disciples betrayed him with a kiss. One of his closest disciples denied him. All of his disciples fled. Those in power had him arrested, had him beaten, had him tortured, and placed on a cross to die. But the God, but the God who can use a donkey, the God who can use us, was not defeated. The God who can use whatever bread you can find in your cabinet this morning, whatever juice you can find in the refrigerator to help us experience divine comfort is not defeated by any object, is not defeated by any power, is not defeated by any pandemic. The King of Kings has come into town, has come into our lives. The Lord of Lords is here, and the Prince of Peace, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hello, Bethlehem. Hello, Nunley and Barnacqua. Thank you all for joining us for this virtual Holy Communion service. We'll have an order of service printed so that you can follow along. And if you don't have your bread and juice ready with you now, you might want to hit pause and, and get those things ready. Now we realize that in this time of isolation that we are all in, that you may not have grape juice and you may not have extra bread laying around. So the bishop has given us special permission during this uh, this unusual time that any element that you have is totally acceptable. So if you have crackers, oyster crackers, uh, Ritz crackers, water or coffee or soda, uh, at this point in time, any element is totally acceptable as long as we observe communion in the spirit of our living God. You know, John Wesley, as our bishop has reminded us, was not only the founder of Methodism, but he was an innovator and he was a practical theologian. And our purpose in this service is to share the grace and the presence of our Savior Jesus Christ the best way we can during these challenging and trying times. So join us now as we approach Christ's table with grateful hearts. You'll find the responses on the screen. We're experiencing Holy Communion in a, in a new way today. And though we are physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as the family 
of God through our baptism. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present with one another as we gather from across the miles. The presence is marked by our shared praises, our shared prayers, and our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now in our shared eating. And now, as we share the great thanksgiving, each time the family, of, uh, the family response is said, you'll repeat back the response that has been given to you. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. And the family says, we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the, because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. And the family says, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, holiness, and a new life. When the flood came, you provided the ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remains steadfast. And the family says, day after day after day. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. And the family says, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And the family says, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And the family says, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, release the captives, and recovery of sight of the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. And the family says, he healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. And the family says, he is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day. And the family says, day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself for us, the Lord took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the, supper, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healers and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. The family says Christ has died. The family says Christ is risen. And the family says Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you. We belong to your body. The family says we belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. The family says we will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. 
And the family says, Amen. Would you join with me as we pray together the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be whole again. And this cup over which we give thanks reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled again. These are the gifts of God for the family of God. And the family says, thanks be to God. I invite you to prayerfully partake in Holy Communion by whatever means and elements you now have. Craig, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. And now, would you join me in our closing prayer? Gracious God, day after day after day, you give yourself to us. In two or three gathered in your name, in connection across the miles, and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel our restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on lean on me for when you're not strong I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on for five it won't be long short I don't need elbow somebody to lean on call me call me when you need a friend when you need a friend Sarah when you need a friend, Joe. When you need a friend, Craig. When you need a friend, Harry, Ron, April, Max. When you need a friend, you just call me. Call me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Bethlehem. We'll be back next week. And this week, don't forget to turn in, tune in to Monday, Thursday service, Good Friday service, and of course, Easter next Sunday. God bless. We love you.